Good Sunday morning. My name is Jaden Jefferson and welcome to this week's Community Focus. This morning, I am joined by State Representative Lisa Sebecki, who is also a candidate for County Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone's doing well. Yes, yes. And you? I'm doing fantastic. Just, just been out there working and knocking on doors and um, getting the message out about my campaign. And election season is here and it's going to be a very busy one. So what made you decide to run for county commissioner? Well, um, you know what, Jane, I have always, um, from the time that I served in the military to my current date now of serving in the, in the state house, I have um, done my work through public service through the public. And when the public has um, asked me to step up, um, to serve them, I um, take their advice um, very personal and step up to serve them because it's been my pleasure of, of always being able to serve the public from the day that I was 19 to the day that I'm now that I'm 54. What have been your thoughts in watching the redistricting process unfold? Because we've all been watching that and it's been uh, it's been surreal to kind of see how things have been going in Columbus, which is where you spend a lot of time as state representative. So what has been your thoughts on seeing that whole thing just continue for weeks and weeks? Yeah, thank you, Jane, for that question. Um, it's been very um, troublesome because the voters in 2015 and 2018 overwhelmingly said over 70 percent of the voters have said that we wanted fair districts and fair maps. And unfortunately, um, the Republican Party, the GOP, has really dug in um, really deep to say that we really don't care what the voters say. We're in charge. We've been in charge for 30 years, and we want to continue to be in charge. And you know, instead of serving their constituents, they're asking to serve. The, they're doing exactly the opposite. And um, that's a really sad state of affairs in any place that you have politics. And because I, as a state representative, as I was on the school board, I, uh, and as a union leader in our area, I've always served the people that have put me into place and not the other way around. And so uh, I'm just really sad that the state of Ohio is in the position that they're at. Um, we don't have maps for the state house or for the state senate or the opportunity for people to be able to vote for their um, state central committee person. Um, they're costing tax, they're gonna cost taxpayers lots of dollars. And that's, to me, is not um, what should be happening. We should actually be looking at protecting taxpayer dollars. But there's a few that wants to spend their taxpayer dollars. So there'll probably be another primary um, to the tune of about $20 million of taxpayer dollars. You're right, and there still are a lot of decisions to be made regarding taxpayer dollars, both on the state level and locally. And with you running for county commissioner, there are plenty of issues that we have to have addressed here locally in the county. So what are some of those issues uh, on the priority list for you? Absolutely. And thank you for that question as well, Jaden. Um, well, one of the things that um, really kind of struck out at me is this one-time gift of monies that the Biden administration has um, put in Lucas County's um, hands, and that's around $83 million. And I know back when I was on school board and oversaw an $820 million project to build all these wonderful schools and renovate two wonderful um, 100-year-old high schools, um, that would be Scott and be Wait is that we asked the community on how they wanted those um, buildings to be designed and what they wanted to see in that. We had many, many stakeholder meetings. But unfortunately, around the $83 million of one-time gift of money that we received from the Biden administration, I've yet to see an, an opportunity for stakeholders to weigh in on where they would like to see that $83 million spent. We've been told a lot about where they're gonna spend it, but we've not been um, had an opportunity as a community. So I feel that we need to do better. I feel that we need to ask the community that there are stakeholders, the ones providing those funds to come back home from the federal government to home to be utilized. We should really have um, opportunities on where those dollars would be going and where those dollars would be investing. I have some ideas of my own, and some of those would be 
uh, you know, number one is when you get one-time dollars, you have to be able to protect those one-time dollars and how to be able to maintain those to be able to work, not just for today, but work for many years down the road. And um, I hear from businesses all the time that they want to look at uh, Toledo. They want to look at Lucas County to come here. But one of the things that we're lacking is rooftops, homes for people to be able to move into. And so something that we could really do with that $83 million that we were given from the Biden administration would be able to example, to be able to look at the areas that we have around Lucas County that has um, septic tanks that are leaking into our grounds that in, ultimately end up into our Great Lake that we've been spending a lot of dollars to try to clean up. And so I would like to see those dollars spent in those areas so that we could have development and we could have those rooftops. So when we go out there and show our portfolio that we have the energy, we have the wherewithal, and we have the space to be able to, for people to be able to bring their families and be able to raise their families right here in Lucas County. And they can work here, they can retire here, and they can raise their family here. How great would that be? And then we wouldn't have a decline on our census, which is less dollars that we get from the federal government, um, that we would have an incline, much like Columbus does. And it's already rare to get federal dollars, you know, to get money from the government. That's not something you see often. So it can be really difficult to get a lot of those important things done. So how do you intend to propel the county forward, you know, whether or not we have more money coming or this is it? Well, Jane, I think that this is going to be, you know, a, it's a one-time opportunity. And uh, very rarely do you get this influx of dollars coming from the federal government. So we need to really have a strategic focused stakeholders meeting on how to distribute those dollars and spend those dollars. Because once you spend them, say if you build a building or something like that, you have to be able to maintain that building. And that's something I spoke a lot about when we were given the gift from the, the taxpayers right here in Toledo when we built schools for the, uh, for the school district and from the state. We should just be happy with the, the um, minimum a standard of maintenance on a property. We should have another layer of being able to maintain those properties so that we um, have a livelihood out of those. And I just believe that we need to look at that a little bit more closely. And voters know you pretty well. They know how you feel about a lot of these issues that are currently impacting us. But is there anything else you want them to know about you as you're now running for county commissioner? Right. Well, I'm not going to change just like I haven't changed over all these years in my elected position is I'm going to continue to engage in the community, be in the community, advocate for our community. And when it comes time that when we are when there is legislation that's impacting Lucas County, our local government funds, just like I did with a state representative, fight hard to bring those dollars back here and fight against those that were taken away from us. I will also not hesitate to continue to drive that two and a half hour drive down to Columbus to be a voice for Lucas County um, so that they hear from us. You know, we pay for lobbyists to do a lot of things for us around here but we don't show up. And we often wonder why Columbus, Cincinnati, Cleveland, it gets so much attention. Well, I can tell you, and I've witnessed it because they've shown up in Columbus. So I'm not gonna just stay here or um, be on a, you know, an, an island in the summer when the, the sun is shining, it's great. I'm gonna be continuing to do the work 365 days a, uh, a year. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just like I have when I was on school board, just like I've done when I've been a state rep, and just like I did when I was a, a labor leader within my union at Jobs and Family Services. I will continue to advocate and be there for the people. Instead, the people have to be there for me. Hey, Representative Lisa Sebecki, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jane, I appreciate it.